Hi guys, welcome to Lafort Daily Demos. Uh, today I'm going to teach you how to sketch a motorcycle or design a motorcycle. Now, I'm not going to pretend to be a professional motorcycle designer. Uh, it's not part of my background. So what I'm really trying to do is communicate and teach you uh, a few rules, a few, tr few tricks um, for understanding the proportions and the stance of a motorcycle. And if you learn, I think, some of those basics or those principles, then you can get started um, sketching motorcycles. And with some practice, you'll have a better understanding of what some of the... Um, the issues are, what the, what the um, technology is, what the limitations are, all those sorts of things which will then inform and uh, inform your design choices and make your design work much, much stronger. Um, but for now, or for getting started, or to learn how to at least draw a motorcycle, it's really important to, to um, understand a few basics. So let's get started with that. Um, these sketches are blue line sketches I've done before. Um, Blue line meaning I'm using a blue pencil lead, in this case a technical pencil. Uh, I like to get started with the mechanical and then I come back and I add uh, some indigo indigo blue with my Prismacolor pencils um, to add more depth and things like that. Um, so these are some ideas and some rough drafts uh, I played around with earlier. Um, I like to sketch on trace paper, it makes it a lot faster and a lot easier to see or use an underlay uh, for building off of uh, for a new drawing so you can move quickly um, through your work. Uh, it's really helpful to know get rid of the slate uh, it's very helpful to know some proportions when it comes to a motorcycle so I have here some uh, layouts some CAD drawings with uh, some illustrator vector graphics just laid over the CAD drawings uh, so you can see circle circle proportions or circle ratios and one of the things you could see on this dia valve for example is the gap between the front wheel and the rear wheel and for now I'm just assuming that both wheels are the same size I know that many motorcycles the front wheel is uh, a little bit smaller than the rear wheel um, in some cases the wheels are the same size sometimes they're really large sometimes the front wheel is larger than the rear wheel um, all those things will modify your design choices as you learn more about motorcycles and um, the particular and unique issues and, and factors that go into it. Nonetheless, if we look at this motorcycle, we can see that based on the front wheel circle or radius um, of the front wheel, uh, if we repeat that circle over here, we have one, we have two, and we have about a half, maybe about three, uh, two, somewhere between uh, half and three quarters, about five eighths, uh, till we're at the second uh, or the rear wheel. So that's a pretty good ratio to have right there. So if you know that, if you say, okay, if I give myself a circle and a half gap, I'm pretty close to the right wheelbase for a motorcycle. Now for sketching, that's sufficient. We don't necessarily need hardcore technical data and everything else. We're going to resolve all that in the computer modeling using SolidWorks or Alias or whatever the industry um, software is that, that a particular uh, motorcycle company might be using. But for sketching, for coming up with ideas, uh, which is the whole point of sketching, um, that works pretty well. The other thing that we notice is that the what's called the fork rake or the head tube angle the angle at which the forks come off of the front wheel. If we notice we lay a 30-60 triangle down on top of that and we lay it in this case something like that. Oh, I got lucky this triangle lines up very nicely. Um, but if we line up that triangle like that between wheel, base, or, uh, wheel axle and axle you notice it's a 60 degree angle there or 30 degrees off of vertical. So that's really interesting too. And that starts to set up some interesting things too. In this case, for this particular bike, we can also repeat the, the wheel. That helps us establish maybe where the center line of the next circle is. So another half circle up. And you notice that we're at about the top of the fork leg and the top of the headlight and coming across the gas tank. The seat is a bit lower than that. So we can start to proportion uh, based on simple ratios or simple, simple reference points. I think it's a great place to start for sketching. 
and it doesn't bog you down in trying to plot points on a grid and get caught up with that too much. So this is a good place to begin. Here's a, a, a Ducati, Ducati Hyper Motard. Again, same configuration. Uh, there's our wheelbase in between. That's one wheel. That's about another half a wheel. And again, uh, so regardless of the actual wheelbase, the technical, you know, this uh, Diaval is 59 inches. The, uh, sorry, the uh, Hyper Motard is 59 inch wheelbase. The Diaval is a 62.2 inch wheelbase. I mean, you know, for sketching purposes, splitting hairs between a couple inches is not a big deal. Now, the difference between that and a chopper, for example, may be quite large. So you do want to watch out for things like that. Here's a Confederate uh, fighter, pretty bad looking motorcycle, uh, pretty hardcore. I've outlined in a light blue, I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but the actual angle based on uh, using Illustrator to just kind of plot that angle. So in this case, it's a 26 degree off, off of a vertical. Um, regardless, it gives us a really good idea, a really good benchmark and, and starting point. You can see the seat is really low, just hovering over the rear wheel in this case. So get familiar with motorcycles, get familiar with some styles that you like. This is a beautiful concept rendering from Akapovic. Um, you can see this, the head tube angle in this case is swept back a lot, a lot slower, uh, which basically gives it a much slower uh, cornering radius and things like that. So it's clearly not a, a track type bike where it's meant to um, corner a lot tighter. This is much more of a, a, a um, uh, kind of a chopper kind of, uh, kind of idea, or cruiser at least anyway. Uh, but again, there's the proportions. The Akapovic has some really large radius wheels. So you can see that is a much tighter wheelbase in proportion. Um, you repeat the rear wheel. That's one wheel. And we've got just a, not even, not even a quarter of another gap there. So it shows you how low the stance and the position and the attitude is on that bike. So here's a photo of Brad Pitt on one of his bikes. Um, this one is a uh, custom build, I believe. At least this is what I found somewhere. It's a custom Harley uh, built by Cabot Engineering or something, perhaps. Anyway, that was uh, posted on fastdate.com. Uh, um, so I don't know how accurate that information is. But nonetheless, you can really see how kickback, how thick the tires are in this case compared to the Akapovic. So really burly, hardcore, uh, fat, fat air tires, you know, and uh, the fork rake is really kicked back, 42 degrees, so there's our 3060, there's our 3060 line right there, uh, this is 42, and you can see how low the seat is, the seat's like actually lower than the, uh, the, the rear fender in this case. So it gives you some really interesting relationships, how tight is the body or the, the frame to the, the ground. You can see his seating position, his his legs, and the angle that they're seating. When he's actually riding, this is the foot peg that's really important, and I think this is the clutch pedal right here, the clutch, um, clutch arm, whatever you want to call it. But I think that his boot heel uh, notch of the of the heel sits here, and his toe comes up underneath here. So it's a real cruiser, relaxed kind of style bike, like a almost like a chopper, but with the low handlebars, uh, unlike a uh, chopper. So, and then here's a, a figure on a, on a bike. I think I got this from um, uh, Daniel Simon. I think I'm somewhere on his website or on his, his page somewhere. He had an, a reference, like an image like this. I just found it off of Google. So this really helps see your form, your position, your stance. What is the seating position? This is a very relaxed, upright seating position, very casual, very, very um, easy to to you know, very utilitarian and, and jamming around the town. So anyway, you can still see the same ratios. So once we know that, let's get started, huh? And then the, the toughest challenge is how do you translate that to a perspective? That's the hardest thing that students always, always face. So I'm going to get started here on a, on a, on a sheet of bond. And let's just go ahead and strike a horizontal line uh, for the ground. I did say earlier I like to sketch on um, trace paper, but what the heck, I'll just get, get going. 
So let's just say I'm using this triangle and I'm really lazy about finding my ellipse guide or circle template, although I would, you know, this will give you a much greater range of circles. Definitely use a circle template. Don't beat yourself up trying to, um, trying to freehand. Uh, I'm going to eyeball where I think roughly the center axle, axle line is here. And now I can use my system, that rule, and I can mark there's one wheel and then half a wheel is ooh, I'm a little bit long of a half wheel so if I want a longer wheelbase I could move it out more if I want a tighter wheelbase I can tighten it up so I'm just gonna stick with roughly a half which is roughly about there I know I'm a little bit long but that's okay so that's right there and now the tangent of the rear wheel is gonna be off of that circle And if you look at enough renderings, you'll notice that automotive transportation designers never really complete the wheel down here. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that in a little tighter so you can see. They never finish that circle and they draw sort of the baseline of the, the ground line, meeting the tangents a little bit early there. So we got a nice strong, strong foundation or base to the, 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 the bike. So go ahead and give yourself a, um, I'm going to go ahead and block this here, line up with my horizon line or my ground line. This is just an elevation view, it's not going to be a perspective yet, so I'm just getting started here. Um, there's my other axle. Go ahead and give yourself the center lines if you like, um, it helps you find it later on. Go ahead and strike the vertical center line here. There's the axle. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing over here, the front or the rear. Now, what you decide is the front or rear is up to you. Um, and now, um, I don't know if this triangle will fit. It's close enough. Um, if I set it up this way, then clearly I'm establishing that this is my front end of the bike. And that's the back end of the bike over there. I'm going to get that line to align to the axle. So there's the rough uh, outline or proportions of the bike. And from that, I can start to make some choices about do I feel like I'm doing a cruiser or am I doing more of an upright kind of scrambler style, 70s Honda kind of style, or what? Or am I maybe I want to stretch the wheelbase out longer and make it much more of a kind of a chopper, or maybe it's a front position, but with a really long rear end, more like a drag, or drag, drag bike or something like that. So the choices are yours at this point. I am a big fan of starting with the forks myself. So some things to know about forks is just simply like how the hydraulic or the, the uh, sorry, the not really a hydraulic, but how the sort of front end um, compression piston kind of thing works. Um, what do you call it? The suspension. The shock, the shock and the shock absorber and the spring, which is all internal mechanism in here. And, you know, maybe that mounts to the wheel here. You don't have to know every detail when you're getting started with the sketching. Just start to sketch tubes. So I'm imagining chrome tubes here, more or less. I also know that there's going to be brakes, you know, and there's going to be things like the tires and things like that. So you're going to need to make some choices about how thick and or how deep do you want your tires or your rims? You know, if you want that really fat tire, um, like we saw on Brad Pitt's custom ride, um, you know, that's something like that, perhaps. You know, so maybe come off of that ring with a, another ring, which is now the rim. So that's the rim and the fatness of the tire something along those lines and you can while you're set up you might as well go ahead and match those ellipses to the back and again if you want to start imposing your design choices it's yours that's up to you um, if we're looking at this we're looking at the right hand side of the bike in this case um, and so I might start to want to position things like thinking about a headlight here. 
and I'm not really sure what that shape is. Now, I'm starting this right now. I don't have any preconceived ideas about the design of this particular sketch, so I'm just going to start dropping in some shapes and forms. I always I do like these bikes that have this really low ride kind of seat position. So if I start to think about where a fender might be, um, that might be back here. I may also start to think about where the frame is coming in in the back. Um, that strut arm um, that supports the rear wheel. And sometimes you can just gesture some edges and some shapes and some shadows and things. And you don't really have to try to plot points and imagine like or uh, try and sort out and figure out every single detail of what it is you're trying to draw. So I know that this little arm probably has a little hinge, a pivot point. It's probably not so little actually. And maybe the bike really does sit low. And maybe it has like this kind of box shape or something up here. And that sweeps back down towards the seat. And if it's a petrol bike, gas powered bike, then it's going to have to have some sort of tank up here. So you're going to have to start to think about some of those elements. What are the forms? What are the pieces of the bike? And how do they come together? Um, the handlebars are an extension of the fork. And again, if you ever get stuck, have some printouts next to you of some things that you like, some bikes that you like. You don't have to draw every detail of the motor and know every single part and component. Um, I'm going to make it so that the drive, the drivetrain is on the left side, which is the other side of the bike. That makes it a little bit easier. I don't have to think about that now. I'm starting to think about the, the disc brakes. And the, there's going to be a caliper here in the front for that disc brake. And um, maybe start to think about exhaust too. If it's a if it's a uh, traditional style bike, again, it's going to have an exhaust system of some sort. So you might want to start to think about the design of that and where the air is coming out and what part is pipe and does it disappear into the into the frame somehow or into uh, another part of the bike, does it wrap up? Is it an element that kind of comes out of the engine? Um, those are all things for you to start to investigate as you are drawing. Um, and don't be uh, trapped into thinking you have to do only one drawing or you'll never be able to do it again. You'll, you'll figure it out, you know. It comes, uh, it's a process. So, and you'll get better and better the more times that you start to, you start to design or draw things that you don't know what the answer is to. In my book, or my view, the, the whole point of drawing is that it starts to raise questions about what you know and what you don't know, or what you thought you knew about the bike. Or about, in this case, about motorcycle designs in general. Um, you would have a spring somewhere back here. This could be under the seat. The seat could be, uh, you know, that could be the suspension in the, in the rear. Or there could be an actual suspension um, spring back here or something along those lines. So, and there's going to be a shock absorber. I think it's internal to the spring. It's sort of inside the coil. Um, so those are all details and things to get to know and get uh, more familiar with. What are the elements? How does that attach right there? How does it attach here underneath the frame? Um, you know, so. Again, I'm not plotting points, but I am thinking all the way through the process to envision or imagine what might be happening there, even if I don't fully know and have just some sort of idea. Now, the handlebars do attach to the fork legs, and they kind of come down towards us in space. So I'm going to start to put ellipse here and here. That's for the throttle on this side. And then I know that I can't really draw all the components and the details of a, a brake lever here. But I can certainly give a suggestion of that curvature. And that might be just enough for my sketch. Putting a little crosshatch in here, which gives the, that grip a little bit of a texture. And I'm just burning in areas where I know a little bit of chrome logic, so I'm adding some shade. and areas like that, changing dimensions around tubes and things like that. I know that tubes have to clamp together 
around a smaller tube. And then there's gaskets and little little elements and things that, um, you know, again, I can't draw all of that stuff. But I can take some styling cues from what other people have done or some other bikes. And there's some really interesting suspension systems that, like, uh, this, this bike by Pitt has got. So I don't really know exactly what those are, but pretty cool looking. I can tell you that. So I'm going to just kind of tie these elements in. I know it has to attach in some way. So I start to put like little things that I think are might be hinges or um, pivot points and stuff like that. And stay loose with your sketching and develop uh, ideas. Um, you know, maybe there's uh, maybe that's part of the engine right there. And um, there's a bunch of pieces here that I can't. I'm not going to be able to draw all that in a in a short demo. So um, it just you can just give a suggestion. You could start to draw some things that you think are tubing, um, and tubing has to connect and anchor to something else. So that may be a bad line right there. But there's also a head tube back here where the the forks attach to the the frame. Try to keep track of some of those things anyway, as best you can. Some of these pieces. So here I'm thinking about like the seat, you know, that's a change of material. It's an opportunity to render something. Here I'm thinking about what might be the, the tank. Here I'm thinking about a fender. Start to add some texture to the tires if you like. Um, you're not getting into tire design. So you can see just to keep the angle, I'm just kind of spinning the paper around. I hope that's not too disorienting on the video uh, when you're watching. I'm going to give a suggestion of the, of the tire in here and on the opposite side as well and it's pretty good it's a pretty good idea to start putting in some kind of value changes for some shading where the tires rolling away from our eye perhaps away from the light I should say so you want to build depth into your drawing even if you don't have all the answers all of the the every variable of like what this thing is that I'm drawing right here there's some sort of transfer case or something like that that's okay again as I draw or as I render and sketch ideas emerge you know and, and questions emerge and things that I I need uh, to maybe do research about and figure out uh, what that really means and how that's really attached and um, all that kind of stuff so don't let that stop you in the uh, from getting started. Uh, maybe there's a you know a speedometer, a tachometer up here. You know, maybe it's got a little bit of an angle to it. So when you're riding, you can actually see it. And I think when you're First, starting out, don't get too involved with like, oh, every little custom little shape or something like that. It might help your drawings a little bit, but it can also overwhelm you thinking that you have to have all that knowledge in your head. Every industry, every designer in every industry has a degree, a large degree of, of mm, form knowledge, you know, things that they know about because they've drawn it so many times. So you can't compete with that when you're just getting started. That comes with time and with practice. And the more you draw a particular kind of thing, like the more you draw automobiles, the better you'll get at it. The more you draw interiors and furniture and architecture, the better you'll get at that. So 
What you can do is learn from your process, though, so that you can port it over to unfamiliar terrain. So here I could just start to add some shading, and I can give the impression that this is a crease uh, gas tank here. So that's all I'm doing on this. I'm just kind of working through. I start with some shapes. I you know, build some things in that I think are pretty interesting in terms of form. Uh, I'm looking at some reference photos, um, several of them at the same time. That helps me carve out uh, and understand that I can fake some things in here. Maybe there's a, I need to have, whoops, um, I need to have the peg coming out here, and I'm going to have a lever that sticks up here. So again, I can't necessarily draw every detail of that, um, at least not in a first sketch. And a lot of it is I'm just trying to figure out how would that attach. And um, I learned from it. And everywhere I don't know an answer to something, you know, I can I can just kind of sketch through there. I can add uh, some blacker values, some darker values, and start to create some depth in the drawing. So it's like a decent uh, start. It's not bad. Um, at some point in your process, you may want to pick up that pencil will only go so dark. So you may want to start to pick up an indigo pencil. An indigo I can start to use for adding stronger depth and stronger reflections, stronger shadow depth. Um, anywhere I just feel like it's just it's reading too flat. So um, yeah like this this is an area where beginners can kinda overcook the drawing uh, again, me not being a motorcycle mo motorcycle designer, you know, I'm not familiar with doing motorcycles. I've done a few here to just kind of warm up, but um, you know, maybe I wind up, I'll maybe wind up overworking this drawing. It's okay if I do. Um, I can always do another one. The whole point of design drawings is that we are exploring shape and form and we don't have to feel like we're creating a masterwork of art. As I work around here I'm putting in you can see some deeper shadows. I'm kind of thinking of like this I don't know why but a triple exhaust system on this left uh, sorry right side of the bike. I have no idea how that would work but something to think about anyway and you know we can see if it is anything worth discussing with the, with the engineers and the production team or what have you, wherever the, wherever the project winds up leading. Some of these areas can just be really deep and dark. There's like other pieces of the, of the bike in here um, and the, the, the motor mounts and whatever. I mean, there's just shadows and light and things like that too. So. Again, you don't have to have all the answers. I like to have several of these pencils um, sharpened in advance. So I can just pick up a new one every time. I think that lead broke. Every time the um, I need a new pencil, I just pick up a new, a new pencil and keep working. So you can see I'm leaving a lot to the imagination. I don't have answers for most of it. I'm going to be completely honest and transparent about that. Um, I don't know how a lot of it works. It would all be areas for discussion to resolve and uh, develop. But the idea is that we're looking for a kind of certain attitude and a certain mood to this drawing, right? So that's what we're exploring when we're sketching. We're looking for we're looking for certain kind of 
position, stance, character, attitude, whatever it's defined by or however it's defined uh, by your your you know your client or marketing teams in many cases. Um, you name it. So I'm just burning in some stronger shadows here at the ground. Kind of anchoring in the drawing a little bit. Again, a lot of things that I have no answers for. But let's say now we want to go and we want to transfer this, and I'm not going to do an exact replica of this particular bike, but we're still exploring, we're in this ideation phase of sketching and drawing, and we're trying to figure out maybe what the bike looks like in perspective. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a new sheet of paper here. And um, I'll move that. Yeah, I'll go ahead and move that to the side. So, best thing you can do is start practicing drawing cubes and boxes in perspective. So if I start to build a perspective here, okay, and this is not for beginners, uh, you should know something about perspective at this point, but if I start to build perspective here, <clears throat> if you want to use straight edges, you can use straight edges. One thing is I can see where my angles are right here, and they're about the same, which means a cube is going to have the same um, dimension to the right as it is to the left. So if I measure that dimension here, I'm on the right track for a cube in height. Now for a motorcycle, I don't necessarily need a cube. What I really need is a square so that I can start to map what a circle looks like or what a wheel looks like in perspective. So here you need to know your ellipse logic. You need to know where the tangents of the ellipse need to meet, meet the tangents of the box. And you need to understand, I mean, you can bisect corner to corner, and you can see where the center point of the box is. And the more you practice this, the, the more you can take shortcuts and just get there quicker. The biggest thing is you really need to know your ellipse needs to lean, that the minor axis of the ellipse leans towards the opposite vanishing point. This is the number one thing that beginners screw up, basically. So you got to practice this to keep working on it. Now... Um, remember what we, we said here about a wheel and a half till we get to the, th the, the rear wheel. So what I can use is a scaling function. This corner through that center line, that would be two squares or that would be another wheel right there. I can bisect that again uh, to find the center here. So that's three wheels, three total wheels. I need to be in the center of this one for my last, my rear wheel. So I'm using the straight edge just to tighten up the work a little bit, be a little bit more precise so you can really see the geometry. I'm not sketching quite so much. So my last wheel is going to be back here. Now I could sketch that and I can also use that as the center axis of the ellipse. And I can also sketch the center line through there, and that will help me control. I can also take this point through that point to scale that half back here. Another way of controlling your ellipses. So if your ellipse logic is weak, take a little more time with this stuff, or brush up on your ellipse logic, perspective ellipse logic. Okay? So now we have roughly the same ratio in relationship between a front wheel and the rear wheel. And likewise, I could actually flip this bike around and decide that this is the front wheel and this is the rear wheel and I'm drawing a rear view of the bike. It's up to you, Whatever, however you want to focus on it. You're welcome to use this as one side of the bike and then we build the depth going off to the right. Or you could imagine this as the center line of the bike and you build to the left and the right towards us. I like to just go off of the wheel this is my way of kind of approaching it. Uh, I start to build what is basically a cylinder. And again, the cylinder tangents are going to go towards the right vanishing point in this case, right? So you have to get that symmetry uh, on track. 
can be off a little bit and you can correct as you work, but you got to get it somewhat on track. I'm going to go ahead and sketch uh, the other side of the tire here. I'm going to sketch the inner part of the tire and the rim even, some thickness there. So I'm just sketching through. All these lines are fuzzy, but I am seeing where the shape and the form belongs as it comes forward and things like that. Now one of the things you want to practice not doing is flattening out your wheels or your ellipses too much or forgetting that this ellipse came forward here. So that's what's causing me to flatten that a little bit there. The other thing is that tires are rounded up and over the top. They're not flat, generally speaking. So the ellipse is the tangent of the cylinder is constantly curving over here. You've got to get your brain around that transition as well. Very, very difficult for our minds to understand that. And again, it's not exactly beginner work. Our axle is coming through that center line of the ellipse. I can approximate how much I came out on the tire. Now the vertical tells us a lot when we go back to this system, or this, well, let me find a better image, better drawing. Yeah, if we go back to this drawing, if I build a box here, I can see that my 60 degree angle is about half of that box. That's really good reference for drawing the fork rake back. So I go back to my perspective now. If this is that half, then I know the fork rake should be about here. I've come out for the thickness of the tire. So I'm going to come out for the thickness of the tire. And I know that the fork rake must be about that angle. And I can mirror that on the other side. So that's the starting point for my fork tubing. And then I start to sketch the width of the tubing. And now I can start to sketch the arcs of the, of the, uh, you know, the fatter tube up above. Um, the outer, the outer tube versus the inner tube of this fork leg. I think if you look at older, uh, older style bikes, I think the thick tube is actually on the bottom, and the thin tube is up above. And I think they flip that around in more modern bikes. So that's something that is a good point for thinking about and questioning. How well do I know that detail, and is that always true? You know, it's, a, it's worth investigating that. So I'm starting to flush in. There's a cross brace here between that ties the left fork leg to the right fork leg, so they move together. And I know that if I left it there, there'd be a lot of twisting and, and torsion. And so they, they have to come up higher. And then off of here is maybe where the fork leg comes up through that cross piece and this the center line of this is back that direction and that is actually where it's mounting to the frame so I can shift that over to our eye and I can even again burn in some dimensional depth and it starts to feel at least feel like it's on the right track And again, if you don't know all the details, it's okay. It'll come with time. I'm adding a little bit of a pullback to this upper brace here. 